let's begin with some lovely little pathologies. If we want to link archaeological interpretation and natural scientific methods, we need to have the material. Like, sorry, you might have the best DNA machine in the world. Ain't gonna help if you've got no DNA on your side. Uh, what I'd like to speak about today is the next step. We also won't need questions that generate a desire to do the research. And I'll drag it a little bit, and of course I'll do it in a negative fashion because I'm a very pessimistic human being, uh, on the example of chronology. So I'll kick off a bit with uh, a quick overview of the Scottish Iron Age, loosely conceived, so basically anything 1st millennium BC, 1st millennium AD falls into it. Then I'll have a quick view overview of what's a chrono, what's on chronos, and why don't we have more chronology? Okay. This is the Scottish Iron Age. Uh, I'll probably need to stand a little bit. Can you hear me at the back even without the microphone? Good. Can Doug hear me? Probably not. Uh, what we have here is a very shabby Google uh, satellite image of Howlam Rings. It's a site in uh, southern Scotland. It was for a long time fairly important, and now it's most forgotten. But even in a shabby photograph, you can see, oh, there are some ditches over here. There are uh, a couple maybe roundhouses over here, some more ditches over here. So you can basically say something about this site without any more effort than typing it into Google. And even on smaller sites, uh, here is Basel Fort again, southern Scotland. Well, here would be the sea. It's lying on a bit of a cliff and uh, it's got a ditch. So again, you can say something based on very little effort. Great. And sometimes you just have upstanding stone architecture. However, once you take a shovel and start digging, you get this. You get a bunch of post holes, maybe some ditches. And unless it, and yes, you do have exceptions. You do have fantastic sites with a lot of stuff, but the bulk proper commercial archaeology Iron Age in Scotland will look like this. What do you find there? You will find, in terms of stuff that you can throw at your machines, um, five poor barley grains, three of which are in vase intrusive from the nearest distillery. So you've got two barley grains which you can identify and uh, if you've got too much money at the end of the year you can maybe radiocarbon date them and do some stabilizer to put them in the table for get. So what kind, <clears throat> what kind of archaeology do we get out of this kind of uh, evidence? Well, it's an archaeology where we can speak quite a bit about how sites appear, what are the relationships in space, <clears throat> what are the relationships to their surroundings, and more and more we are getting some dating perspective on them. What we can do really well with it is economy, ecology, technology. Oh, but then we have Cranog. Now, Cranog is a word that is used very loosely throughout 1st millennia BCAD in Scotland, and it basically means anything that's vaguely artificial and vaguely in the water. Uh, Generally, it's supposed to refer to artificial islands, uh, but people also use it in reference to Cranogs uh, in the Firth of Clyde, which are actually platforms in the intertidal zone. And if Ancrone and uh, Graham Cavers weren't viciously fighting against it, they would by now, someone would by now chronologize Black Rock of Merton, which is a marsh settlement, uh, a lot like Mass Farm. So, okay, that's a chronog. What's on chronogs? Well, the common theme is they are either submerged or waterlogged. So you've got organic preservation, you've got surviving wooden elements, and then it doesn't really show very well. We tried, you know, last moment before going to tag, hey Mike, give me a good photograph that we have. Most of this muck over here is organics. So going, so thinking from this perspective, now think back to one talk before, what could you do with all this information by just identifying it? 
take it a step further, start playing a bit with uh, isotopes. You can start teasing out very, very slight changes in the ecology of the plants and all of that, then throw in some DNA. It's all waterlogged, so the DNA of the plants is surviving, so now you can start asking, okay, they not only have barley, we know they have barley, how many strands of barley do they have? Uh, how much cross-fertilization between the barley is going on? You can not only figure out what's the technology, you can start asking questions about the champ operatoire of the whole economic, well, not the whole economic system, but quite a lot of the economic system. It's great, it's fantastic. So, why aren't we flooding and filibustering Journal of Archaeological Science on a permanent basis? Now, here things get a little bit more abstract. Uh, I think that, well, the obvious face stand-up reason is, yeah, doing excavating a crannog with all the waterlogged deposits is expensive, uh, and then uh, going through all that material would be even more expensive. Yeah, that's the easy answer. But then again, the ERC is throwing millions at other projects. What I believe is at least one of the underpinning things here is that the kind of archaeology that we can write from the crannogs is vastly different from the terrestrial one. And if the questions you ask, if the paradigms you live in are paradigms built around relationships between sites in space, relationship between sites and natural topographic features, relationships between sites in time, it's very, very hard to find a reason to dig a crannog. You can always go to the crannog, mark it on a map, take off a timber, wiggle match dated, get a date, fix them in time, and continue with this broad landscape analysis. What's happening here is the nature of the dominant archaeological record creates a theoretical I hate the term landscape, but for lack of a better word, a theoretical landscape within which it is very difficult to find the questions to justify spending a million or two million or three million on doing a single crown of well. So, going back to the tautology, we need the material in order to do our analysis. We've got material on crannogs, but we also need the questions. And in this particular case, the questions still aren't there. And, and I live it at this. Actually, thank you.